Hey there, we're gonna make multiple lines from one line. It's called offsetting path. We're gonna start with this kind of first guy where we expand them out and do some cool racetrack looking stuff. We color it in and then we do a little bit more elaborate where we both do the outside, like this kind of drop shadow effect here, plus an inner line here so we can slice out and lots of stripey lines. All right, let's go and learn how to do that now in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, let's start with a really simple thing. Let's draw anything you like. I'm using the uh, curvature tool. Okay, I'm trying to convert you across. Uh, so double click for corners, double click for a corner. I'm gonna even hold shift. Okay, uh, click once for a curve, uh, double click for a corner. What am I drawing? I don't know, I just kind of made this up before I made this tutorial. Seemed kind of cool shape. So double clicking and I'm gonna go back this way a little bit. Double click for a corner, double click for a corner. Now I've got, uh, mine's kind of weird because it's got a fill. So I'm gonna get rid of that fill, goodbye fill and add a stroke. I'm using that kind of limey green color. Awesome, so I've got this. Now I want to go and create those extra lines. It's really simple with my black arrow. I'm going to go to object, I'm gonna to go to path. And there's one in there that says offset path. Okay, um, I'm gonna turn preview on to see what's, how, how far apart it's gonna be. Depending on your measurements, yours might be set to points or uh, inches. Okay, you can adjust this. Um, one of the things you might do is the joins here. Now, basically what you're looking for is the ends and where these corners change. So mitered is a square corner. Round obviously is a rounded ends. Okay, might be cool. Or bevel, kind of chops them off at the sides. Okay, you can decide what you wanna do. Great, so it's created this kind of extra separate line. With that selected, you can just keep going. I'm gonna make another one. I'm gonna to go to path and go to offset path. I'm gonna leave it the same dimensions, click okay. And now I've got a few of them, cool. Um, my drawing wasn't the best, <laughs> even though I'm trying to like show you how great the tool is, okay, or the curvature tool is, doesn't matter. I should have spent a bit more time at the beginning. What I'm gonna do now though, is just extend this off for no reason, other than that's what looked kind of cool. And let's say you wanna fill these lines, uh, let's select them all, use our shape builder tool, and which is that guy there if I went a bit fast. Okay, and I'm gonna pick some fill colors and start filling it in. Uh, you. The outside's gonna be that, you're going to be that, and maybe, oh, that is gonna be that one. Yeah, looks okay, maybe I'll get rid of this stroke. Goodbye stroke. All right, so that is phase one of offset stroke. Let's look at doing that slightly more advanced one we saw at the beginning with the text. Okay, so I've just made a new artboard on the side here. I'm gonna pick a font. Okay, uh, I've picked Abril. It's another Abril Fat Face. It is another one from Typekit. Okay, you can download that for free if you've got a Creative Cloud subscription. Type a word, I'll type my name. I'm gonna give it a fill of white. And for this to work, it needs to be outlined. So I'm gonna make a duplicate over here just in case I forget what the font is. And to outline, it is object, sorry, type, and it's down here, create outlines. Cool. So for this to work, if I leave it with a uh, fill um, and no stroke, it doesn't quite work. So we're gonna flip those over. Super shortcut time, it is shift X. We'll toggle whatever you've got in the fill with the stroke or just change them manually. Okay, so I've got a stroker on the outside, no fill. Now I can go up to object, I can go to path, and I can go to offset path, okay, like uh, exactly like what we did earlier. All right, make sure preview's on and uh, choose an offset. You can just click in here and use your up arrow and down arrow just to kind of find where you want this thing to be, okay, how far out you want it to be. This is the outside bit where we kind of lob off the sides to kind of make it look like a drop shadowy line thing. Okay, so that works for me. Okay, and I'm going to click OK. Let's do the internal one as well. So I'm gonna click back on the center, like this thing's all grouped now, so I'm gonna right click it and say ungroup. Okay, I just want the center of these Ds and A's and N's. Cool, same thing, edit, <laughs> same thing, object, path, uh, offset path, and we're gonna do negative. So I'm just gonna do the exact same, but with a negative at the front. Turn preview on, check that. It's always gonna be some weird bits that you might have to tidy up with the anchor points. Okay, like that in and there, everything else looks okay. Click okay. Cool, so those are the inside parts and the outside parts. 
let's slice the holes out of the middle and then do the drop shadow. So um, it's a little bit messy. I'm going to grab these outside ones and I'm just gonna turn the stroke off so it makes it easy for you to see what I'm doing. Cool, they're still there though. So uh, what I wanna do is I'd love to fill the outside shapes. Okay, remember our shortcut? Shift X, okay, uh, switches the uh, fill in the stroke around. Okay, and I've still got these internal ones. Okay, so this is where we're gonna slice them out. So I'm going to hold shift and actually it's gonna be a little hard with these outside lines. What I might do is just grab them, give them a fill again or a stroke again, just move them off. I'll be able to line them up again perfectly later on. Don't worry. Cool, so I've got these lines. I've got a fill and there is this stroke around the inside. So I'm gonna use my shape builder tool. It's shift M or grabbing uh, the shape builder tool and just hold down the alt key on a Mac, sorry, on a PC or the option key on a Mac and just click them and that kind of slices the holes. What we might have to do before we do this one here, I'm gonna to go to outline mode, which is command Y on a Mac, control Y on a PC. And there's just this that needs to be tidied up. So uh, actually I'm actually gonna grab my pen tool, and just get rid of these points. Go back to my anchor point tool and just tidy these up. You you know, your, your, main, your name might not be Dan, so you might not have these dramas. It's really good at extending itself. Smart guides are really good. I love them. Cool, so out of outline mode again. Okay, and I'm going to select this guy, Shift M. Awesome, so those are my insides. Now what we're gonna do is the outsides. And we wanna kind of slice parts of it off because we just want it kind of like dropped off to the right, okay? And what I'm going to do is, I'll show you a couple of tricks. One is, first of all, it's painful when that one's joining, okay? So I'm just gonna kind of move them across. Um, so you might wanna track it out before you get started. There's two ways. Uh, let's look at these two ways. Okay, I'm gonna make two copies. Um, one way is the scissors tool. The scissors tool is one of those weird ones where I never use it and then I sometimes grab it. Okay, so it is, I know it's the C tool, there it is there. So it's underneath your eraser tool, scissors tool. His job is to go uh, snip and snip, then grab your direct selection tool, click off, click back on and delete twice and kind of gets rid of the chunk you don't need. So you could keep doing that, right? Is keep just kind of guess where the, uh, the, the drop shadow would fall. And what I like to do, I'll leave that one there. What I like to do is let's say we'll do the D first, okay? I'd like to grab it, make a duplicate by dragging, okay? So while I'm dragging it, holding down the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, and I'm holding Shift as well because it goes down on a 45 degree angle, and it's gonna kind of work for me. So we use one as like a slicer and one as the results. Um, to make it easy for you to see, I'm gonna make the slicer green. Okay, so we're gonna delete all of the green stuff. We're just gonna use it. And we're gonna go back to my favorite tool in the world, the uh, Shape Builder tool. Cool, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we don't need that line. I don't want um, that line. I do want that line down the bottom there. <laughs> oh yeah, great Dan. Um, so I want him, I want him. It's really, I'm trying to decide where the drop shadow goes can be tough. Don't want the screen thing go away. I don't want that bit. Don't want you now. Cool, I'm gonna click off now. I think those are the bits that I want left. Um, and I've just used my black arrow to select those. Cool, so now I'm gonna grab him and that bit's done. Okay, it can be easy to line back up. Smart guys just seem to wanna be super smart. Okay, and you're gonna do the same for this one. Okay, so I'm not going to do the rest of it with you. I am gonna go do it when this video's over and uh, it's class project time. I would love to see what you've done, okay? Uh, you don't have to use the word Dan, unless your name is Dan, okay? And I'd like to see what font you used. If I was gonna do it again now, I'd probably make this inner path bigger, okay? Because I feel like it's, yeah, it's not doing what I want. You can put like stripes on the inside of these. Okay, you do what you want, pick your font, pick your colors. I'd love to see what you've done. Post your projects here on this website. Also send me, uh, you know, tag me in on Instagram, I'm bring your own laptop or on Twitter, I'm at Dan Loves Adobe. And yeah, love to see what you've done. All right, on to the next video.